Hey, beautiful people, Photo Chat here. So, unfortunately, well, my company is in the process of doing layoffs. And this is actually the second time they're doing layoffs in about a year. The first time happened October of last year. This time, they announced in advance that, hey, we're going to do layoffs and we're letting everybody know in advance with the expectation that, hey, this won't come as a surprise, which is both good and bad because it gives you an opportunity to prepare for the worst. And at the same exact time, it lays out the expectation that, hey, our company is going through some challenges and we're just trying to uh, work things out, right? Now, with that being said, there's never a good time for layoffs, especially during the holidays, but it is what it is. And again, I'm so with the company. I survived the first layoffs that happened last year. And there are some things I've learned and I've taken away from that experience that I want to share. And there's also some stuff I want to get off my chest in case you yourself have never experienced a layoff. The first thing that I've learned is that there are certain things you can do to maximize your odds of surviving the layoff. And that is being the go-to guy for getting shit done, right? You wanna be that person where your manager or your boss's boss says, hey, we have this problem. Who can we count on to get the job done? Dave, that's who. And that's both good and bad bad because now you have this expectation and responsibility that okay people are going to come to you with their problems but it's also good because that means that hey people are coming to you with their problems and you're able to solve it and make their lives easier then it's going to maximize the value you bring to your employer and give you more responsibilities right increase your odds of climbing the ladder so that's both good and bad depending on where you're at in your career. So being that guy who doesn't say no, who takes on additional assignments, additional responsibilities, if there's a layoff, the company, your manager, your boss, whatever, they're gonna be inclined to keep you around. Having a skill set that's not easily found. This is another big one. Now, a bit about my background, I have a master's degree from Georgia Tech in analytics. I know a lot of data science stuff. I know a lot of languages, Python, R, I know SAS, Tableau, Power BI, M, DAX, VBA, Databricks, Snowflake. I know how to build a model from scratch, deploy it, all that jazz, right? If you're flexible, and somebody could take your skill set and solve A, B, and C, then again, it's gonna go back to, hey, we want this guy doing more work, which is good and bad, but we know this person is able to justify their value. So having a skill set that's in demand is always gonna maximize your odds of surviving a layoff. And the third thing is just building relationships which I happen to work from home and I'll be the first whom it is challenging. There is a big difference in being at your company, people can see your face, okay, the water cooler moments, and there is value in that, there is. Versus, all right, being a remote employee, you're losing out on that experience, but you take the good with the bad, all this to say that you can still work and maintain meaningful relationships even if you're a remote employee and you want to do everything you can to maximize those relationships some people say playing politics however you want to phrase it at the end of the day you want to have meaningful relationships okay so those three things being the go-to guy having a skill set that's valuable and relationships will maximize your odds of making it through a layoff if you've never been through one. Now, <laughs> the feelings associated with a layoff um, are worth talking about. 
The first being that at the end of the day, you could do everything right, okay? You could, gosh, work on the weekends. You could make sacrifices. You could have delivered the report that was needed. Last minute to the CEO, everything you needed to do, you did, and you still get let go, right? I got got. That sucks because there is this sense of hopelessness. You just feel powerless about the situation. And I think that's really the shittiest part about layoffs is that you know that no matter what you do, there's still a chance you're going to get let go. And yeah, the fact of the matter is that's just a feeling you're going to experience. And I'll be honest, beautiful people, um, I'm not very emotional. I consider myself to be to be a pretty um, to be pretty tolerant of stress, high stressful situations. Not that I like being in them, but if I find myself in a situation where I'm under a lot of pressure, I'm going to be all right. Going through the process of a layoff and uh, wondering if you're going to be affected by it, especially a second time. <laughs> For some people, man, it's nerve-wracking. For others like myself, it's just this constant feeling that it doesn't weigh you down, but man, throughout the day, you just get these thoughts. They just pop up, and it's always at the worst times, too. I could be taking a walk with the pug, right? I could be grabbing an old-fashioned with some of my bros, dinner with my old lady and then the thought comes up shit what if I'm laid off just it happens right and I haven't found a good way for dealing with that but recognizing the moment that it happens so that it doesn't ruin whatever it is I'm doing it's um, worth calling out there so feeling powerless about the situation the stress associated with the situation, it just creases up and it nags and wears you down. I lost some sleep over it and I happen to be in a situation where, all right, if shit hits the fan and I'm laid off, I'm going to be all right because, and I thank the big man upstairs every day, I have no debt, I have a decent amount of savings saved up and gosh, I have assets where if things get really, really bad, I could liquidate some of them. But last not until several months down the road, right? So I'm grateful for that. But if you're not in that situation, if you have a mortgage, you have a car payment, you have people depending on you, a family, then, oh man, yeah, that's going to weigh you down. And I have some friends who are going through the same exact situation as we speak. They were just laid off. They miss their mortgage payment for the first time. They miss their rent. And now they have people, debt collectors after them. And it's not, it's not a good feeling. But there's stuff you can do to mitigate your stress. That's where I'm trying to go with this bit here. And that's, especially in an economy like this, uh, having a side income, a side hustle, you're not above any job. You're not. Especially if you have people who are counting on you, family, children, whatever, a spouse. Uh, if you need to put food on the table, then yeah, you know what? If that means you got to be a janitor for a bit, you're going to be a janitor. If I have to pick up trash to gosh, make sure that my kid could eat food, eat breakfast and dinner so that they won't have to starve, I'm going to do that. Now, I don't have any kids, but... All that being said, we're in a bad economy right now. It's bad. I'm convinced we've been in a recession for, gosh, at least two years now. I'm just, you could see it. You could go on LinkedIn, you could apply for jobs, and you're getting ghosted. A new job opens up, a new job just posts, and you can see within an hour, we're over 100 applicants, right? It's, it's tough out there. So if you really need a job, don't go thinking that, hey, I have this awesome skill set and I could be picky because there's always somebody better out there than you and that person is willing to settle for, yeah, 
for less, right? <laughs> I, I've seen on LinkedIn more than a few posts, more than a few profiles of people and their profile picture is the most obnoxious thing where they have this icon. It, it's this text that says, open but picky. It's like, well, how are you going to be open and picky in this situation? You're unemployed. Take what you can get, is my point. I get that there's a certain level of pride, but at the end of the day, if it comes down to it, you got to survive. Right? That's where I'm going with that bit. Um, finding yourself in a situation where you have no debt is probably the best thing that can happen if you're laid off, right? It helps so that you could get better sleep, but more importantly that, <clears throat> okay, um, I'm laid off. I don't have to worry about my car being repossessed or anything because it's paid off, right? So if you're laid off, try to pay down your debt or at least have enough money so that you could service it. And knowing your options too, this is important. I happen to work within servicing and collections, data science aspect of it. And what I mean by knowing your options is if you are in a position where you're now missing payments, if you're not able to service your debt, you have time and there's something you can do. So I'll use the example of a car. Um, depending on the company, most of them won't begin the repossession process until you're in bucket two, meaning you're at least 61 plus days past due. And there's also a good portion of companies that won't repo your car until you're in bucket three, 91, play, 91 plus days past due, which means, hey, <laughs> and I'm not saying take the chance, but if you really truly need to buy yourself some time, you have about three months before they're like trying to repo your car, right? Stuff like that is, all right, I have some leeway here for if I really need it, then I could catch my breath. And working with the company, the debt collector, and saying, hey, look, I'm down on my luck, man. What kind of programs do you have that can help me get back on my feet? They're willing to work with you there. So I've been through collections before. Believe me, it, it's a shitty process. It's a shitty feeling. But hopefully you're working with a good lender and they have programs to help you out. Just ask. Say, hey, do you have a program? a payment program or can I even get an extension where they push out your payment by one month? I just need some time to get back on my feet. They're willing to work with you there. Okay. That's what I mean by knowing your options. And I guess the last thing I want to mention too, before I wrap this up is that you're going to be feeling everything under the sun. All right. <laughs> you could apply to a hundred jobs, and you could feel like, yeah, you were productive for the day, but then a month goes by, two months, three months, whatever. You start feeling despair, just this dread that, hey, shit's going to hit the fan. Um, it, reach out. Okay, it's what I'm trying to say here. If there's people who care about you, all right, don't go kicking the bucket. And I've had, I've known some people who, they were like <laughs> at their wits end, right? They were feeling down and out, like, dude, what's the point anymore? If things are that bad, right, call someone, reach out, okay? I know it's uh, tough times out there for a lot of people, but you matter to someone, okay? I don't know who you are, but I'm sure someone's counting on you. So just remember that um, if uh, things get that bad, right, which... Fingers crossed, I'll throw a prayer out there, that won't happen, but some stuff I wanna share about surviving a layoff and going through this process again that I hope you find helpful and valuable so that if you're going through a similar experience, then it could at least make it a little bit easier to navigate this process. So beautiful people, I'm gonna wrap it up there. If you have any questions about servicing or collections, let me know. I literally work in this space, okay? How to deal with bad debt collectors, um, payment programs, what to expect when it comes to, let's say, vehicles or credit cards. And those are the two products I happen to be pretty knowledgeable about, right? Um, let me know. I'll be happy to answer the questions, see what I can to guide you through that collections process. And even if it comes to like a mortgage, I could get information to try to help you out, right? 
So, yeah, beautiful people. And let me summarize everything. There's stuff you could do, right, to make sure you could survive a layoff, be the go-to guy, have a valuable skill set, basically justify to your employer, to your boss, that you're either making no more money than it costs to have you or you're saving no more money than it costs to have me to having you. Having meaningful relationships, okay? That's probably the most important one. And then going through the process of a layoff, you're just gonna feel all sorts of emotions, but the most prominent one is that things are just beyond your control, right? You're gonna feel powerless and that's all right. Stressed out, that's natural too. Recognizing when you're supposed to be having a good time and you start getting these negative thoughts, being cognizant and aware of that so you won't let it ruin your experience. Um, nothing's beneath you, right? If you need a job, take it, whatever it is. It, it's a momentary thing anyways, okay? And knowing your options, if you have debt to service, reaching out to the company, the lender, whoever it is, um, you'd be surprised. Many of them are willing to work with you. So hope you found that information. Helpful, beautiful people. I'll keep you all posted here. And as usual, I'll catch you around. Godspeed. Take care.